everyone. As I have been showing you a few different colouring books lately, I thought I would show you through this book. Now, this is a little bit different to any of the other books that I've got, and I have done one picture in it, which I can show you. But I thought I would just show you through it, because I think it's quite an interesting book. Now, I do love colouring flowers, which is why I picked this book up, as I wanted a bit of guidance. And I'll show you how, and look how pretty this picture is inside here. So what happens in the book is that we've got all these flowers, they tell you the names which is really useful so if you've got one of these to colour you can look it up and how to do it and what happens is it gives you the picture of the flower and an outline and you can copy it. It doesn't give you any help with technique or anything like that but what it does do is give you an outline and something to copy. So here we've got some little water droplets on this one and things like that but you've got to try and guess how to do it. Now I wasn't sure about the book and I had to go at one of the flowers, we'll get there later, but uh, it was quite interesting. What I didn't like was the fact we've got these very deep dark lines on here but there are no lines on this picture so unless you can find a way to erase them, some people use gesso or a white acrylic or something to cover them over a little bit, they're there so you can never make your picture look like this but it still is really interesting and I love this style of colouring, this the sort of almost Victorian look of flowers I, I think. So I will just show you through, so here, I don't know the names of the flowers, so I'm just going to show you the way it all works, so you can have a little look. Uh, these are daffodils, I do know that. I think they might be Narcissi actually, because they're small, but anyway, carry on through, I'm sure that's a peony. But again, we've got a water droplet there. I mean, I do work out how to do water droplets by copying pictures, but... It's still a bit tricky. See, this one's a bit old. It's got a stem with no flower. But we've got the very pretty tulip there. Okay. That one's pretty. I think I know what that is, but I can't remember the name. Hyacinth? Okay. There's a back of a poppy with a seed pod. And an iris. It's got a pretty little butterfly on. Those, I guess, are like sunflowers. And a snapdragon. I do like a snapdragon. Now it's a sweet pea, I think. I don't know what that is. Is that a passion flower? Maybe. I don't know that. And that looks like a type of iris to me. It's pretty. Now this is the one I have done. What I found difficult was the background. Um, I did it in white rather than cream and it just looks like I haven't bothered to colour it when I did but I'm quite pleased with the way I matched the colours up. I used polychromos and I matched it pretty well but I'm not sure about this green here but I did this a really long time ago. I could probably do a better job now. I've had a lot more practice than I had then but uh, that's the one I had a go at so you can get an idea of, of how you can um, do it and what it helped me with was shading. Do you see how this bit's darker and so I've done some shading here and under there and things like that so it helped me with that and it's just a different way to uh, colour really. I know there are lots of other books that do this sort of thing as well. For some people I think it could be difficult because you're trying to match a professional picture you're probably not going to get it looking identical to that. Anybody would struggle, um, however much practice they've had. So uh, that could be tricky. But on the other hand, you can learn a lot by looking at the light and shade, even just looking at the pictures. You can see how the leaf curls and how it's darker under there where the shadow is and how the, um, these are darker underneath than they are on the top and things like that. A very pretty rose. Yellows I find tricky so it might be worth me having a go at that. Oh another sweet pea. I can't think what those are called. These are violets. We've got another couple of water droplets there. They're actually not done in the way that I would do them which is interesting. 
This one I like, it's quite three dimensional. So how you get from that to that to make it look three dimensional could be quite interesting. It's very pretty that one. There's some anemones. Of course you could do the picture differently, you could do it in different colours. Some of these are the same flower, maybe in a different colour, because that's the type of poppy I reckon. A bit more of a Californian poppy maybe. But that's been coloured in by me. Yeah, I did that one, look at that. So I coloured that one in, I can tell because it's gone out the line, I always go out the line. So I haven't really got the same effect as that, because I haven't made those little bits that are marked in as dark, I don't think. I also haven't coloured that bit in under there, which is interesting. But, uh, I didn't know I'd done two. Yeah. But what I did, I got this um, and I just went back to my Johanna Bassford. That one is gorgeous. So that's that book. I thought I would just give you a look at a different sort of colouring book just so you can get an idea in case you want something a bit different. So there we go, there's that one. I put a link in the description. So my light's reflecting off the top, isn't it? I'll put a link in the description so you can uh, go and have a little look if you want, if you're interested. That's lovely. Well thank you very much for watching and happy colouring.